And, and it's amazing, especially Christians, especially Christians. Why? Because, to be honest with you, our words have more power than any other human beings on earth. Why? Because we are connected to a power source that gives power to our words, both positive and negative. Now, listen, I'm not just talking about positive thinking, negative thinking, I'm not, or, or even you know, positive speech or negative speech. I'm not just talking about that. I'm talking about the result, which will be that, but I'm talking about you changing because when you changed on the inside, when you became born again, uh, it should start affecting your outside. And the number one way it affects your outside is your words. And if you don't change your words, then your outside won't be that affected. As a matter of fact, it will work against you. There are so many scriptures. I dare say there are more scriptures about words, your mouth, your tongue, your speech, as a general topic than any other topic in the Bible. Now, I, I, can't, I haven't done the research to give you an exact number, but I'm telling you, I, I just, from everything I see in the Bible, all the reading I've done, I really believe there is more talk about words than anything else. And so, because even when you talk about sin, you have to talk about words. Because one of the ways, probably the, the biggest way that Christian sin is with their words. Probably the number one thing. Most Christians are not out just sinning, you know, doing step, wrong stuff. But yet, they never change their words. And because of that, it hinders their growth because you're working against yourself. Your spirit is so powerful because it is connected to God that whenever you say something, you're using your soul to say it but it's affecting your spirit. Now, your spirit, for lack of a better term, and please don't say that I'm saying this is what it is, but the, the closest example we have of your spirit is like a supercomputer. People talk about your brain being like a supercomputer. No, no, the, the spirit is way stronger and much more effective. And the thing is, see, you can prove this because you'll try to come up with the answer to a problem and you'll just think and think and think and can't come up with it. And then you'll just eh, forget about it. Go do something else. And all of a sudden, bloop, there's the answer. Isn't it amazing that when you're not looking, you actually find it? Why? Because your brain was working so loud, your spirit couldn't get a word in edgewise. Right? But whenever you shut your brain down, which some people do often, they, you, <laughs> And they forget to start it back up sometimes. But that's a whole other sermon. But when you shut your brain down, your spirit is able to speak through into your soul, and there's the answer. And it'll bring out why. Because your brain, or let me put it this way, your spirit already knows the answer. Why? Because Christ is in you. In him is hid all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. You have his mind, 2 Corinthians 2, 16. And so all that, and even in 1 John, he tells us, and, and you know all things. And so all those things that you know is in you. And it's just waiting there. But sometimes we're so busy with our soul that we won't get it out of the way so our spirit can speak. And so many people work against themselves in their speech. And the Bible even talks about that. It talks about people who uh, struggle against themselves, actually. And it says that one of the hardest people for us to win, that we must win, are those who oppose themselves who oppose themselves. Think about that. That's people who refuse to believe the Word of God, refuse to act on the Word of God, refuse to sometimes even hear the Word of God. And so they oppose themselves. But there are other aspects. There are Christians who oppose themselves. Why? With their words. And their words work against them. Because I, there's, again, so many scriptures that talk about your words. You'll have what you say. Kenneth Hagin didn't invent that scripture. That's Mark 11, 22 and 23. Uh, Jesus said it. Brother Hagin just quoted it a whole bunch. But Jesus wrote it, spoke it. Let me put it that way. Mark wrote it. All right. <laughs> so now, here's the thing though somebody can come in speaking the right thing, and yet, like I said, you can know they only speak it when they're in church because their whole life is messed up. And yet, there are so many things, so many ways that you can change your words that will eliminate unnecessary suffering. The Bible talks, and we're going to go through a lot of these scriptures probably, like I said, but the Bible talks about how you are snared by your words. Well, how, what does that mean? Because 
it talks about that, you, that in Psalm 91, it even tells us that we will be freed or protected or, or loosed from the snare of the fowler, which is in our terminology, we would be saying the enemy, our enemy, the enemy of our soul, Satan. But he will snare you in your words. In other words, isn't it amazing? You speak the word of God, and in the beginning especially, it can take a while for it to come to pass. But yet you can speak something negative, bam, and it's there. Why? You know why? Because you're so developed in the negative. And when you get that developed in the spirit of God, in the word of God, guess what? Then the positive starts happening as quick as you say it. But we've been so just embalmed with unbelief and doubt and all the negative stuff that we're so skilled in it that we believe it. And that's what Jesus said in Mark eleven twenty three 23, that you will have what you believe. Yeah. 